how's it going? It's Angie here from Pathways to Perennials and today I want to talk to you about gypsy moths. Now you might be wondering why I want to talk to you about gypsy moths in the middle of winter, but let me show you what I just found when I was out for a walk. I found this one mass of gypsy moth pupa that had hatched last year. You can see hundreds of pupa on a single tree trunk and in and amongst them is dozens of egg cases ready to hatch this spring as soon as the temperatures warm up. So if we can continue to go outside on these mild days, find these egg cases in and amongst any areas we were known to be infested in last year, or trees they loved, then we can remove any of the egg cases to help decrease the population next year. I don't know about you guys, but here in York region and across other regions of the world, we have been infested with gypsy moth caterpillars over the past few years. And unfortunately, there's no sign of them slowing down just yet. So when I find something like this when out for a walk, I find it very important to share this information so that we can help eliminate the problem or drastically reduce the problem next year. We back onto a forest, so this is going to seem like a very big task for me, but the more I can find and eliminate, like I said, the better I'm going to be next year. I live in an area where we have very mature trees and a single year of infestation can damage the tree it puts it into a little bit of stress, but two to three years in a row of massive defoliation can entirely wipe out my tree. So it can lead to problems of stress, disease, and unfortunately mortality. So it's very important when you see an infestation to deal with the problem head on. Contact an arborist to spray for gypsy moths, or do our part now, eliminate the egg cases, and then be mindful and diligent in the spring and summer months as we see the eggs start to hatch and the caterpillars start to feast on our trees. What you want to do with these egg cases once you find them is scrape them into a bucket of warm soapy water. I can't stress this enough. Scraping them off the tree and letting them fall on the ground is simply not enough. Letting them hatch on the ground is going to give you the same results as if you just left them on the tree. We tried a science experiment last year in the fall when we were hunting for these egg cases and we scraped them off. We put them into a container, a sealed container, and we put them in the garage. We figured what's going to happen to them. Are they going to die? Are they going to go dormant? Are we going to see them hatch in the spring so we can be more aware of when they're going to hatch so we can be on top of the nests and the trees and any damage so we can continue to um, be due diligent in controlling their population. But as they were in the garage and the temperatures were warming up, tiny little black caterpillars started to emerge. And there were thousands of them and they were so gross and they were everywhere. Thankfully, when we saw them hatching, we sealed them in a Ziploc bag on top of the container just to make sure nobody escaped. But I thought they were going to just go dormant and die, possibly hatch in the spring. Well, after they finished hatching, a few weeks went by and they stopped moving. So we thought, mm, they must have died. Okay, perfect. There's a few thousand caterpillars that we just got off the, got out of our area. And then I started filming this and I started looking at gypsy moth caterpillars and I wanted to pull out the egg cases so I could show you what we found last fall. And when I did that, I left it in the kitchen on a sunny window. And then a day goes by and suddenly thousands of caterpillars are moving around all over again. And so they went dormant in caterpillar form and they continued to thrive in our climate once the temperatures rose again. So that goes to show you just how hardy these caterpillars are. So leave them after you've scraped them in a bucket of warm soapy water for a few days so you can guarantee that they've drowned before you dispose of them. Now gypsy moths haven't been discriminatory in their flavors. They love oak trees, they love birch trees, but when they finished with those, they also moved on to our spruce trees. So I can't even tell you, we have a neighbor next door who has three oak trees that line their driveway. They're absolutely spectacular trees, but the gypsy moths have loved them over the past few years. Last year, they were infested so badly that I had my three daughters out on the driveway squishing caterpillars every single day. We'd see them in the leaves, in the trees, and then they'd fall down and shimmy their way across the driveway and over to our property. They were so bad last year, they were crawling into our pool. I can't tell you how disgusting that is. Unfortunately, they can also produce an allergic reaction in people. So anytime I touched a gypsy moth last year, I broke out in red welts. So caterpillars, as they get older, they tend to eat faster and eat more in a single day. So in their later stages of life, they can defoliate a tree almost overnight. So the more we can do now in the winter to prevent them from hatching, the better. 